All right, welcome folks to a tutorial on WX widgets in the Mac operating system. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up WX widgets, compiling it from source and running your first application. And I'm running on Apple's new M1 silicon, so Apple silicon. And this tutorial should also work, however, on your Intel machines as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into WX widgets, the C++ library that allows you to create GUI applications. We're going to go into downloads and then into the source download here for Linux, Mac, or OS. I'm going to download the latest release here. You are welcome to also download the GitHub, which I will show you. So let's go ahead and extract the contents here. And this will sort of unravel our file here and give us WX widgets 315. We can see the contents here. And we'll go ahead and notice that in WX, we have a CMake list file. And that's actually how I'm going to be building today. So I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but I do want to show you the documentation. So in case things change later, if you're watching this video in the future, WX is very well uh, commented, uh, which is very nice in the actual source code. And nice uh, documentation pages have been generated. So I can read a little bit about the uh, use cases for it and which platforms are supported, uh, for example, for OS X, since we're talking about Mac here, just to give you an idea here. So again, we could use G++ uh, or Clang, for example, uh, for building. Uh, but where I want to take us now is the programming guide and installing WX widgets, and then we will revisit the Hello World example to run our first application. So we're going to be building from source. Again, as I mentioned, you could do this with the latest and greatest on the Git repo if you want. Uh, I like using the release because I know it's at least a little bit stable um, in that regard. In fact, there is a slightly older version that is labeled as stable uh, from the download page. And we can follow the Mac OS X um, instructions here, but I'm actually going to do it from CMake. If CMake doesn't work, just know there's another alternative you can try with the configure tool. You know, for example, if you're building on the Intel-based Mac, you can try that. Uh, but I like CMake a little bit better. Uh, CMake, if you're not familiar with, you can uh, download it here, but it's a meta build system that'll generate a file for you for Xcode or Make or whatever. So go ahead and click on the CMake build instructions. Uh, and I'm going to do this all from the command line. There is a GUI tool if that's useful, but let's go ahead and do this uh, from the command line here. So I'll bring up my terminal window here. Uh, I'm going to CD into WX widgets, and this is 315. And let's go ahead and take a look. So again, there's that CMake list file. Again, CMake list, I like it because it can fetch various dependencies. It provides nice, uh, nicer, I should say, error messages if something's missing, so you can try to figure out what happened. Now, what I'm going to do is make a directory for our uh, binaries here. These are the actual libraries that we're going to build for WX widgets. So I want to go ahead and move into that directory. Again, just to show you we're in this uh, empty directory in WX widgets. That way, if I want to remove all the files that I've created or something breaks in the build, it's a little bit easier to just delete this directory. Okay, so now if I'm running CMake, and I'll show you which version I'm using, uh, a relatively modern version here, 322. And uh, so that's what you'll, you'll need uh, as of this recording. Um, if I just run CMake with uh, the help options, you'll see that we can generate various project files for how I want to build the library. So you could use Xcode if you're more familiar with that and get a project file. Uh, I'm going to use make here because that's what I'm most uh, comfortable with. So by default, that'll get you created. Uh, otherwise, you could do JASG and Xcode, for example. Uh, by default, mine is set to do Unix files. So that CMake list files found in the directory uh, above this directory. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and we'll give this a moment to configure. Now, it looks like I got one little warning up there, but that's not going to cause any problems from when I've done this. And in general, you know, if you are missing something, it'll warn you or tell you. And just go ahead and, you know, handle those dependencies one at a time. Uh, if you do get an error, I recommend that you delete all the files in this directory and then run CMake from scratch just in case you run into problems. Okay. So now that we've done this, the key thing is how do I build the uh, actual libraries that are going to show up here? Uh, in fact, if I um, list the contents of uh, libs here, um, you know, there's going to be a bunch of empty directories. Um, you know, same thing with uh, the lib directory. So how do I actually build those? Well, again, that's my make file here. So I'm going to run make. 
Uh, I'm going to do a parallel build, J16, uh, so it'll use 16 threads to build and compile the software. That way it'll go just a little bit faster here uh, for the purpose of this video. If you run into errors when running this, especially if you're doing parallel, just try typing in make itself so it does a single threaded build. It will take longer, but um, sometimes on rare occasions I've had builds with make that for whatever reason, a dependency isn't built or these files are built out of order, is what I'm saying, and that can cause problems. So just in case that happens, just do a simple build. Okay, so I'm gonna let this finish up and then I'll join you in a moment. All right, so now that we have successfully completed our build and we can see that we are 100% built, even though there's a few warnings here, that's okay. Um, what I'm gonna look for in my build is again, that in my uh, library folder, uh, let's actually just list these out here. You can see that now we have a bunch of dynamically built uh, libraries here. And those are the things that we're gonna be linking into our application so we can take advantage of WX widgets, uh, the library that other folks have worked hard to build. Now what I want to show you for building a project from the command line is this tool here, wxconfig. Uh, so I'm actually just going to run it here so you can see that there's a bunch of options. And this is the tool that's going to help us with the returning information about the libraries that we've built on our system. Okay, so for example, uh, and it sort of describes here, it's going to retrieve automatically for us the stuff that we need to build our libraries. That is the include paths and all the libraries. Um, so I'll just go ahead and run uh, WX uh, config here with the version, just so you can see that it is indeed 3.15, which we built. And then I wanna go ahead and show you uh, the flags that are of interest. So CXX flags, that's with two dashes. And here we can see all of the include paths that will be included for us. So you can see include, you know, the uh, WX uh, 315, include directory, and then all the symbols that need to be defined uh, for us here, okay? Uh, and likewise, we can also include the uh, libraries here, or rather retrieve the libraries from this tool here. So, you know, pthread, the lib directory, etc. You know, you could type these out on the command line, but, you know, it's using the absolute path here. So if I distribute this to somebody else, that's a problem. Um, so I do want to just rely on this WX config tool, especially since there's a lot of libraries I have to re uh, remember to uh, link in here. Okay, so now that we've got that here, uh, and again, just to highlight where those are, if you're just trying to understand how this tool works, uh, again, we're using either the CPP flags or I use the CXX flags, that's what's recommended, uh, and the uh, libs here. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and build our first application. So we've seen here, I'm gonna revisit the programmer's guide. Again, how I got there, user manual, programmer's guide, and the hello world. Now it'll be useful for you as you become a WX Widgets Pro to actually take a closer look at this and read through it, but I'm just gonna copy and paste the full application at the bottom here. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, select everything. And I'm just going to copy this and create a hello application for us. So let me just do this. I'm gonna do it straight in this directory just so it's easy to reference this uh, particular application. You might wanna put this on your path, for example, so you can reference it, uh, that would also be okay. So let's just call this hello CPP. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, paste everything in here. So paste, and we have our application. Uh, here it is, It's and now we want to build it. Now again, normally I would build this, I'm gonna use Clang since we're on a Mac here, uh, a specific version of C++, I like using the modern stuff, uh, the code that we're compiling, and the output here, right? So if I just run this, we're gonna go ahead and see that we're you know, missing this file here, right? We haven't told it where WX widgets is. The include path is missing uh, for this particular uh, include file at the top. Right, and that's where we're gonna use wxconfig. So in the current directory, find wxconfig and give us the include path here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit uh, enter. And well, we've included everything, but now we get new errors. We're missing the implementation, right? And that's 
the actual library files, so C++ files that someone else has compiled, where all these functions exist. Okay, so anytime you get an undefined reference, that means you're missing a C++ file or a library. Okay, so let's add libs here. I'll hit enter and no compiler errors. And now I have the program available. So do dot slash prog. And just like that, we'll get our first WX widgets application. Super cool here. And WX widgets does things in the native operating system. So that is the menu bar is up here. I can get a dialog box and sort of the Mac way. Um, and that's pretty cool. That's something I like about WX widgets. It looks very clean and matches the feel of the operating system. All right, so that's all I've got for you. You now are able to write WX widgets applications. Hopefully it compiled without too many errors. If there are particular things we should touch base on, well, make sure you like and subscribe, and then you can make a comment below. <laughs> all right, thanks for spending your time with you. Hopefully this helps folks solve some problems in getting this library compiled.